Okay, so what is this equipment? This is a small membrane uh, equipment that we can use to uh, study actually both me uh, microfiltration, ultrafiltration, nanofiltration and reverse osmosis. Uh, because this little membrane module can withstand a, a great variety of pressures. Uh, right now it's set up for a microfiltration uh, mm -hmm. because the pump in this system is not equipped for uh, reverse osmosis. Uh, so the system basically is a tank uh, tube down to the pump, mm -hmm. which is controlled by a frequency converter, a line up to the membrane module, and the membrane, which I will soon mount, sits here on a uh, porous plate. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you put that there. I will put that there later on. Flows across the membrane uh, and through a flow meter and back into the feed tank. Yeah, we are circulating. Yeah, but this, the, the, this is a total recirculation setup. Yeah, and but the permeate we collect. The permeate is uh, collected. Uh, so it goes through the perforated plate and comes out here. So you see, th this is a fairly small pipe yeah. in relation to these pipes. Yeah. So the circulation flow is much, much greater than the permeate flow. And that's pretty common, right? That's pretty common. Yeah. So uh, what I will do now is I will mount the membrane uh, and fill up the uh, equipment with uh, a water solution. And one thing that I must remember is then to close that valve mm -hmm. that is that we use to drain the system. So that, that you always see a valve like that at the bottom of a membrane plant in order to drain everything. Yeah, and and <laughs> if you have an expensive solution that you put in up here, it's good to know that you have actually closed the valve. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll close the valve now. That's a good idea. Okay, so that valve is closed. And now the fiddly bit. It's a little bit fiddly, but it's not terrible. Now it should be tight. Mm -hmm. And now we fill up the tank. So why do we recirculate anyway? Well, in a small laboratory setup like this, uh, this is a what's called a batch membrane filtration. Mm -hmm. So you, you typically, when you're working with small amounts of liquid, you start with, let's say, one or five or, or ten liters of solution, and you want to uh, investigate what happens when I withdraw permeate from this, the permeate not having a different composition than the, the, the media that we have on the retentate side. So... So some components in our feed solution will be concentrated just as it passes through the membrane. But uh, only to a really, really slow, low degree the first time it passes by. Mm -hmm. uh, because this flow is much, much greater than the flow that will go through the membrane. So we need to do it basically over and over and over again. Yeah, we saw the, the big difference in diameter there with the, the pipes and yes. the outlet there. Uh, and if you go out in industry, it, you, are, you do not use uh, a batch equipment to the same extent, but you might use several uh, equipments in series with an internal recirculation uh, instead of through a tank. So then you have a multi-stage uh, equipment instead. Okay. So now we have a liquid. Uh, it is time to start the pump. And when we start the pump, we will see the pressure going up and uh, flow. 
Should uh, we go through? Uh, let's see. We we g went through uh, the different parts, but we didn't. Did we look at the f pressure meters? Maybe we didn't. So we have a pressure gauge uh, on the inlet and the outlet, uh, so that we there since there is a pressure drop here, the the transmembrane pressure is actually the average of, of these two. Yes, yeah, so we compare those pressures with the surrounding pressure. Yes. And those are relative or absolute? These are relative. Okay. You, you see now, uh, I'm not doing anything and they are basically saying zero. Okay. Uh, and now the, when I start the pump, uh, uh, we will have liquid start flowing through the system. There will be a pressure drop and we have this valve also afterwards that we can use to, uh, to tweak the, both the pressure and the uh, the flow rate. Yeah, the green one there. The small little green one here. Yeah. So that one is fully open now. So mm -hmm. now I just start pumping through and uh, we'll see what happened. Yeah. Are you done? Yeah, things are happening. Things, things are happening. There was a little bit of air in the system. We have, uh, that will settle in a couple of seconds. Uh, we are right now at about 40 hertz uh, mm -hmm. and 82% of the rotometer. So now we're up and running. We have a flow rate across the membrane. We have a transmembrane pressure. Uh, we have an inlet pressure of 0.63 and an outlet pressure of 0 0.56. Yeah, well, roughly 0.1 bar uh, pressure difference uh, between inlet and outlet mm -hmm. at this flow rate. Uh, and the cross flow flow, why is that important? The cross flow uh, is important when you have a, a real solution because uh, the cross flow will uh, be a velocity along the membrane. Mm -hmm. uh, and a higher velocity will reduce the uh, boundary layer and a thinner boundary layer will lead to a uh, better mass transfer, more or less. Okay, so we have friction forces removing... Uh, yes, at the, hi at the higher say. speed we are basically removing things from the... Uh, that has accumulated at the membrane surface. Yeah. Uh, at a larger rate. And uh, now, as you can see, we have actually started to get a permeate flow. Mm -hmm. uh, a very, very low permeate flow. So yeah, that's, th that's our permeate flow. There are some droplets that are forming. Compared to our retentate flow over here. Yeah, I see there is a big difference in flow rates. Yes. And that's why we have the circulation, right? And that's the reason why we have recirculation. Yeah. It, it will take us at this rate uh, to reduce the, the volume of this by 50%. It will take us a couple of hours. Mm. But if we now have a value product here that we want to concentrate, uh, uh, we will then have it at a, at a higher concentration after a couple of hours. Yeah. Uh, the object, objective is, of course, to, uh, to run at as high flux as possible mm -hmm. uh, without uh, destroying the membrane, destroying the equipment, or destroying the uh, things that you have in solution. Yeah. Because since they are valid, it can be proteins or vaccines or whatever that you want to concentrate. And the proteins might be a bit sensitive there then. And proteins might be a bit sensitive both uh, to uh, shear forces and to temperature. Mm. And since we have a pump there, it, it basically rush, rushes uh, energy into the system. So we have shear forces at quite a different places here yeah. that one needs to be careful about. So in this equipment, we can change the transmembrane pressure yes. and we can change the cross flow rate. Yes. So we'll, we'll see what happens now if we uh, turn this valve over here. So this is the retentate valve after the, the membrane. Mm -hmm. And 
we have the pressures here and flow rate here. So when I close this valve, you'll see that these start going up. And you also see that the flow rate is reduced. So the cross flow flow rate. So by turning this valve, I'm reducing the cross flow and increasing the pressure. Yeah. And by increasing the speed of the pump, I'm increasing the flow rate and increasing the pressure. So it's a bit fiddly to, if you want to change one but not the other, that's a bit fiddly. It's a bit fiddly. You actually need to make a good guess. on the settings yeah trial and error it's a bit trial and error and experience yeah <laughs> so now i overshoot my uh 82 percent a bit i'm at 82 percent again and at roughly one bar transmembrane pressure okay and if i now want to increase the the, the pressure again i uh, uh, tweak this a little bit. So I re increase the uh, resistance in the valve and I increase the pump flow rate. Okay. So to set everything in balance again. Okay. So, so uh, if I now want to do an experiment at, let's say, a lower, pr uh, uh, lower, trans uh, lower cross flow velocity, then I will lower the Pump. Mm -hmm. Ah, we can lower it a little bit more. So now we have, instead of being at 82% here, we are now at 56%. Uh, and at half a bar uh, transmembrane pressure, roughly. Mm -hmm. uh, if I now want to go up in pressure, I increase the pressure here a little bit. Then I will drop in flow rate. And then I increase the speed of the pump to bring the flow back to where I want it to be. So if I would do a cross flow, flow rate experiment here, uh, should I start at a f low cross flow flow rate or a large cross flow flow rate if, if I didn't have just pure water? I would start at a high cross flow to begin mm -hmm. with and at a low pressure, yeah. uh, increasing the pressure uh, within the range that I'm interested in. Then I would uh, lower the pressure again, lower the uh, cross flow velocity, and uh, do the next set of experiment. And then, by, once again, lowering the pressure, lowering the cross flow, and then running it again. So why not the other way around? Why not, why not start at a low cross flow flow rate and, and increase it? There's always a risk that you build up things at the membrane surface. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, at a low cross flow velocity, you will build up more than at a high cross flow velocity. So okay. the risk of fouling the membrane is higher uh, at the low velocity. So you do that last to not interfere with the uh, uh, results from the from the high pre uh, high cross flow velocity experiments uh, with membrane a membrane being fouled at uh, at, at a low velocity. Okay. Ideally, you would clean everything between uh, all the experiments, but when you do the first set of experiments, you want to do it fast, get an idea of what's happening, yeah. and then you can, okay, let's not go that far down in cross flow, let's keep ourselves at this level. Okay. Is there anything we should add? I don't think so. Uh, 
I think we are pretty much set now. Okay. Good, thank you.